They lost. Can they beat Saints? Yeah. Right right. yeah. That's the best, best thing we can come up with today. Are we live? Hey, welcome to On Point with Vince and Jackie. And I'm Vince Ferragamo, former Los Angeles Rams Super Bowl quarterback. And alongside me is my good friend, 20-year Los Angeles Rams legend and Hall of Famer Jackie Slater. And Jackie, good to see you, man, good all the time you, on, 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 on Super Bowl Sunday or like, any kind of Sunday. How about this? I like outside. Nice little breeze coming through. Yes, man. Plenty of sunshine. We don't need that fan. Football. We don't need to turn up the fan on there. Don't need to cool. turn up the fan. Got plenty of football action. That's right. Good, Go nice screen. Watching a few of the highlights here on uh, on Sunday here following the Rams game. And, Jackie, you know, we're talking about the Rams and the Saints game they played today. The Rams are coming off a three-game losing streak. Unbelievable. Since the bye. Now, isn't that unusual for a Sean McVay team coming really off a bye is. and fact, losing three is, in a row? This is his worst this is his worst outing. And, and, and someone said to me uh, the other day, were it not for a dropped interception in the Super Bowl, in the uh, NFC Championship game against the 49ers, right. if that being coupled with the record that we have right now, then maybe Sean McVay will be looking for a job. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think they want to give up on him that fast. He's, a, he's an intelligent, uh, young play caller, vibrant uh, uh, leader. Right. And the guys follow him, you know, so it, I think one of the things that uh, Sean is going to have to do is that he's going to have to uh, he's going to have to get more proficient in the way he rushes the football. I, I don't think anybody oh, would ever right. challenge him mentally about how he throws the football, how he deploys all of his players, the players that he picked to use and all that. It's, it's on point, right on point. But uh, when you look at when I look at. The, the way they run the football events, I see a lot of uh, liabilities, especially when you mm. start talking about a young and inexperienced offensive line like they've had to do. Right. They've had to play with a lot of different people. And so, in my opinion, and I, and we've had, we've done, this has happened before. You remember, yeah. uh, you remember we, we went to the Super Bowl with a nine and seven record. Uh, and Vince, we had two players in the offensive line to start every game. So, to see an offensive line decimated is not unusual. I think you 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 can remember all the way back to our days and conclude that. But even today, people lose offensive linemen, particularly with them not playing in the preseason like they are. But right. the but but the difference is the difference is when we lost offensive linemen, we were so steep, we were so in tune with our right. variety in our running game that nobody missed a beat. And I, I can remember, like yesterday, you, you remember Dan Rizek? Oh, sure. Dan yeah. Rizek. He was a center, but didn't he play what, what center and guard? Yeah, didn't but we had to play him at right guard right yeah. next to me. The guy weighed 245 or something like that. He had a bad knee, couldn't even bend. Yeah. And and he was efficient in, during that stretch when we needed him to be efficient because we used a lot of variety. We didn't just depend on him and his brute strength. And he understood the variety that we were using, the footwork variety that we were using our run game. It makes a huge difference. Well, I give I give a lot of credit to the scouting department of the Los Angeles Rams back in those days, Jackie, because when we went into preseason to battle and get re prepare for the season, we were we had depth. We had oh. depth in all positions, Jackie. And you can't rely sometimes on your starters to stay healthy all Absolutely. year long. So it's the next man mentality. But as you mentioned, you mentioned the preseason practice in the game type of atmosphere that we had every day in practice, going against Jack Youngblood, going against Jimmy Youngblood. Competing. You know, competing. Larry Brooks. Uh, I mean, Mike Fanning. Mike Fanning. These guys, you know, Cody Jones. I mean, it was it was a battle each and every day, but, but it, it prepared you for the season right. and got you ready for a long season. Now the NFL has 17 games on their regular seasons, even longer. But, you know, and they're shortening the preseason. It makes it even more valuable Make it, absolutely. to have the preseason and get ready for it. But, absolutely. So now we, here we are in 2022, Jackie. You and me are both can you believe old it? veterans looking old back veterans at these looking guys. Back. What do these old guys know about football? But, but, but it's that, kind of fun. Doesn't man. football keep going? It, it, uh, you know, don't you still got to have the fundamentals you about still, football? You still got to have the fundamentals. And, and you know, there's a lot more emphasis placed on throwing the football now than it's yeah. ever been. In fact, we were looking at these oh, numbers, yeah. Vince, and we saw how defenses in the National Football League now are deploying nickel coverage defenses on first down first more down. so than they ever have. Yeah. In fact, we saw a period of time where we saw a jump, uh, you know. Oh, I know. We saw big jumps in the nickel coverages that were being presented on first down. Well, why is that? Because the offenses are all presenting nickel offenses, passing right. game formations 
on first and second down. So the linebackers is is, is doing a lot to the personnel. The linebackers are getting you gotta be able to on move. the inside. They got to be That's able to true. run and cover. Just a lot of changes. But in my opinion, Vince, the teams that are able to do these things, all the things I just mentioned, and still have great variety in the way they run the football, those are the teams that you're going to have to deal with. Those are the Absolutely. premier teams in the NFL. Jack, you look at the Buffalo Bills. Absolutely. You look at New England Patriots, even still today, even with all the great years they've had, they still rely on what are the fundamental basic ingredients and recipes to win. You have to stop the run and you have to be able to run the football. Absolutely. And the ingenuity of running the game, the innovation that you use, there is much innovation in the running game as there is in the passing game, Jackie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you talk about guys in the defenses in the nickel defense on first down, if you're a team that can't run the football, what are you doing? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm going to come you to the line of scrimmage. You take what the defense gives you, right? If uh, if I'm going to come to the line of scrimmage and they got nickel packages on the field, yeah. I am going to feature my all the five, 300-plus pound guys in the running game. Because you think about it, Vince, I was a whole lot more secure as a run blocker mm -hmm. than a pass blocker. And I, at the end of my career, towards – so at the middle of my career, I, I worked out the differences and I was proficient in but both. But let me ask you a question. You're but a Hall of Famer. You played 20 years, right, in the league. You went to school at Jackson State. Right. Did you guys feature the pass or did you feature the run? Were you guys sophisticated? How were you able to come out from a college in those days that really wasn't seen as much and then progress right in the – and just like – Nothing really. It was like a lateral move, and you went forward with it. Well, it was really, uh, and, and first of all, the environment that I had at Jackson yeah. State was probably one of the more competitive environments that I've been in all of my life. I mean, we yeah. we were live. I mean, the, well, the, that's the, how you learn. Let, to me, practice, let, me, let me put it this way: <laughs> the NC two A would ban me, my coaches, and everybody else at that particular time the way we did things. But yeah. you know, that was just the way uh, we operated. And I, I, my head coach, Bob Hill, God rest his soul, he, was, he played in the National Football League. And so he knew uh, that you had to have great balance. So he coached Walter Payton and Joe Larry and, and uh, I, the, the names of wow. running backs go Some on of the guys and on that you on. guys played Wilbur with. Wilbur Montgomery was there. Yeah. He left and went to Texas Christian and became a we – just, they just did a great job of recruiting good running backs. People can run with the football because now I believe now that strategically you have a better chance to be successful when you feature guys that can make a difference. To me, if you take five 300 plus pound guys and you got a Walter Payton or a Barry Sanders or an Eric Dickinson or somebody like that, run the ball. You, you, run you the are Hoochie. going, if you don't run the football, you should be fired. Yeah. Because now in the run game, Vince. Just, you know, I know you depend on guys in the passing game to be pass protectors as offensive linemen, but the, that's the uncomfortable part for us. The comfortable part for us, Vince, is when we put our hands ah, on the ground, exactly. put some weight on our hands, and exactly, then roll exactly. out and hit people in the mouth. That's where that's where I grew the, when I found out that I was going to be able to, okay, do the pass blocking stuff, which is not easy. Yeah. But if you're going to let me put my hand on the ground and give me a variety of ways to hit this guy in the lift, you like it. I'm loving it. You're enjoying it. I'm loving it. You're enjoying it. It makes the game fun for you, and, and it opens up the game. And as we talk about these two games and these, these two teams that are playing today, Jackie, that's one of the areas of these teams that have been a downfall for both teams. Is they're not running the ball consistently. Not and they're not putting a variety of runs up. And, you know, so as we look at this game today, we're, we're close to halftime. What, what's your impression? What, what do you think the Rams – have to do can the Rams beat the Saints and move forward in, in the playoff contention? I think so. I think they can beat them. I think they're, I think they're probably going to win this ball game. You know, one of the things that they don't have to deal with is Cameron Jordan today. He's yeah. the best overall defensive lineman and one of the best pass rushers, if not their best. So he he's 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 not in the game today. So that's not going to be an issue. And then I noticed that the Rams are very in that last drive right before the half. They were very, very effective in their passing game. You know, they got Matthew Stafford back. The offensive right. line seemed like they got some continuity going, you know, that's building through the hardship that they've had to deal with this year. And so I, I think that the Rams chipping away in the passing game is, is who they are. What I want to see, even though they may have a lead yeah. as we go in the second half, Vince, what I want to see is them run the football. I want to see them put Bob Havenstein, that big 330-pound right tackle, 
in a position where he gets to dominate the individual mm -hmm. in front of him. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to have to give him more than one thing to do. Yeah. He can't keep running inside zone. Uh, can't keep running outside zone well, to the right, inside zone and, in, and outside zone to the left, and the fly sweep. you got to put in some counters. And what's wrong with the power, Vince? You no, know, you get, a double team, you get a double team at the point of attack with that tackle, possibly the yeah. guard in the tackle. Right. You can roll in the backside guard up in the hole. And you're putting a fullback on the Sam. The they don't have a fullback. I mean, that's the put, problem. They, they've been they use Skoronic as a fullback. Yeah, but a he's not a fullback. He's not I, a fullback. But add the variety. Right. Make exactly. Him, make him have to take. You know, make him bite the bullet on that. You play. know what they can do is bring another offensive lineman in, Jackie, and use him as a sixth offensive lineman. Use him like a fullback. And I'm surprised that to. we haven't seen. I've seen a little bit of that, but I'm yeah. surprised we haven't seen more because the offensive line coach at the Rams was at Stanford. And he used a lot of six and seven offensive line formations in their in their short yardage running game and their regular season running game. So hey, might as well you might as well to go on and, and do it. You know, do what you did and had success with that stamp. Well, you know, Jackie, I we got Sean, a treat. Sean's we have a treat for you coming up here. It's like a vanilla creamer. It's inside. Vanilla it's inside. creamer's inside. So I was like, we may have to take a quick break. Oh, and the Rams just scored their last uh, their touchdown right before the end of the half, so they lead fourteen to ten. At halftime over the Saints, Jackie, we'll pick it up in the second half when it, the games become more fun, and uh, we'll, we'll give you our commentary as we go. But we'll take a break right now for uh, our partners uh, to put a word in for themselves. So and stay get, tuned. We'll be right back. Get right, the Jackie? creamer in my car. <laughs>
Well, welcome back, guys, to uh, to On Point, Vince and Jackie. And Jackie, the first drive of the third quarter, which I've always said in my mind is the most important drive of the game, yeah. is how you come out of the locker room, what yeah. you're going to do when you move down the field. And they moved down the field at ease. At they ease. were throwing quick screen. They were running the football, Alvin Kamara. They throw the ball to Alvin Kamara. They just threw a touchdown pass to Jarvis Landry, Jackie, for mm -hmm. a touchdown. So that that was a bad start for the Rams. I mean, defensively, they're they're not afraid of Jalen Ramsey. They're throwing the ball at him, right at him, right, right at, at him. him. You know, I can understand that early on in the season because if you think about it, now he had a shoulder problem in training camp, and you know they don't the Rams protect their veterans anyway. So you know he wasn't doing that much toward yeah. the end of training camp. I think they turned him loose a little bit more to do some more coverage stuff, maybe bounces pads off of people here and there. But yeah, you know, he really had a slow, slow a start to the regular season mm. and 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 at this particular point in time you would imagine or you would think that he would be way ahead of the curve but that didn't look very much <laughs> that didn't look very much like yeah. the Jalen Ramsey that I think we're going to see as well, this year this, goes along this has been prototypical of the Rams all year long Aaron Donald comes up with a big sack or he comes up with a, a tackle thrown behind the line of scrimmage for four yards but then Something bad happens in the next play yeah. against the Rams. Yeah. So you're seeing in great, in great coverage. individual talent, great mm -hmm. plays from certain players. But as a team, they drop the ball. I mean, is that indicative of their season and what's been happening? I mean, I don't know. Vince, I mean, you know, I don't. Vince, like I, I keep going back to this, and you and I experienced this personally with the two offensive linemen playing the whole season. You know, the continuity is important, but it's not the only thing. The, yeah. the, the other way that you go about making a young and inexperienced group of offensive linemen successful, and I keep mm -hmm. saying this over and over, is that you make them learn to do more things. So you have more things at your control that you could, you know, incorporate. Yeah. You know, what I'm seeing right now um, with the New Orleans Saints is them taking advantage of some players that, quite frankly, you know, should be taken advantage of. Jalen Ramsey is a good football player. We all know that. But I don't think he's anywhere near the form he was when they wrapped up, you know, the season yeah, last year. At the that's Super true. Bowl. That's Down true. I think so. He's just not there, and so we're gonna have to deal with over <laughs> overrated, <laughs> overpaid, or something. Well, this no, year, no, Jack, no, no. If anybody <laughs> anybody gets paid X amount yeah. of dollars, I think that they they deserve it, and they you know in this game, you know how hard this game well, is. Let's, okay, let's talk about the payment that the Rams have paid. I, I've heard Jimmy Johnson say the Rams are top heavy. Yeah, where I've they've given a lot of money to a guy like Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey at Cooper Cup, yeah. and they don't really have much left. They The Rams have kind of gotten away from the draft and their scouting department and relied more on trading for the players they think that could help them Im immediately. What's that happened to a team down the long run, Jackie? Well, Vince, you know how I feel about that. You know how I feel about that, Vince. Thank you. You know, I was a draft pick. Yeah, and I was a draft pick that someone invested in that that had to be developed, right? And so, and I ultimately ended up playing a, a quite a long time. I I don't believe that you mortgage your future, even mm -hmm. though they had some success doing it with Von Miller a year ago. Yeah, I don't believe that you you want to make a habit in this business of mortgaging your future by sending all your draft picks away. Because think about it, Vince. Yeah. The average NFL career only lasts three years. When when you and I came yeah, in the league, you right. had to play five years to qualify for a pension. Mm -hmm. Then they lowered it to four. And now it's at three, maybe three one. And it's yeah. only because the guys are only averaging 3.1 uh, you know, years in the league. So if you're going to have a guy for a, young, for a short period of time, why not bring that guy on and develop him to be the that's, special player so you get key. your three years a little bit that's, later? That's right. And a lot of those players, those great players that we've seen through the draft, Jackie, they had to develop over time. Oh, no They doubt. just didn't come in like today. Now there, there's so much interest and it, there's so much money given to the top draft pick that he's almost immediately in the starting lineup. Thrust when he in comes, the sun. He's Thrust right in the start, coming right. Even a quarterback. A yeah. quarterback needs – Time to adjust. I've even said that with even Patrick Mahomes. Right. He stayed behind uh Alex Smith, you know, for a couple of years. And right. then he came into the limelight. So and, and I mean and, and, Aaron Rodgers was another one behind and, Brett Favre. And Vince, don't 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 get me wrong. Just because I say there's value, extreme value to a first to a, a pick, that doesn't mean that I don't value a veteran guy that knows what he's doing. 
Right. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that I don't value the process of free agency. No, no, I, I do, too, because look what Buffalo Bills did this year, Jackie. They went for Von Miller. They've got a team they built on the draft. Yeah. They, Josh, they, Josh Allen. I mean, they're singletary. They're running backs. Absolutely. They're receivers. Yes, they got Stephon Diggs. He came because he liked Josh Allen. Yes. I mean, and now they get Von Miller. A couple guys. I'm not saying for the whole thing. The Rams have gotten the pre, pre, uh, predominantly most of their players from the trade. Yes. From trade. So, um, but let's see what happens here. We're in the third quarter. The, the Rams have just got the ball back, trailing 17 to 14, Jackie. And then here's a third and eight. What do you call? Obviously a pass down, right? Third and eight, you got to throw the football. Oh, but then Stafford look, look under look at pressure. That. Look at oh, that. my goodness, Grace. You know, the thing. The you got to, Jackie. Um, the thing that concerns me. He didn't even me. have time to step in the pocket. Yeah, I know. There for a second. And, and, and oh. unfortunately, unfortunately, what we're seeing and what we're feeling is Ram fans and as guys stand on the sideline, yeah. this is the best side of your offensive line that's getting beat. You know, this is Rob yeah. Havenstein. This came the on the onside. Of you the, see? Oh, my God. They, what did they do? A little they ran a, they ran a They ran a T. They ran a T-E loop with the oh, backer. Yeah. So well, then you if, have if to it stay was Will, so the tackle is supposed to get the outside guy, the guard. The right guard the should Mike. have stayed inside to take the inside well, pass rush. Well, no, what should have happened is they should have declared the, the backer over the right guard as the as the guy, and who you, which you meant, do that, which you meant, do that before the snap of the yeah, ball, don't which you? Which meant that the center has got to pull all the protection to the right, including well, the left guard. That's coordination. Gotta, then. The left guard has got to come and take the guy over him. Oh, here goes the guy. So that's, the that, that was a communication issue, and and it may well have been uh, just a unique way of the of the uh, New Orleans Saints disguising that play. You know, knowing no because historically, I mean, historically, yeah. everybody has a go to protection. With certain formations, you put three guys over there, yeah, and you know they're going to be loaded up with those coverage guys, and you know that they could possibly come on the on the pass rush. So you have to turn your protection over there, anticipating that, right? And so they know this about team tendencies, and what they did with that particular stunt was they went away from the tendency. They they brought the the the, the line stunt and the movement away from the strength of the protection. Does that make sense? Right, Master? it does. And here. Oh, and they had a really good punt return. So they'll start, instead of starting in the Ram territory, they're going to start deeper. You know, Vince, we we, we had some, we, we we went to New Orleans, brings back a lot of memories. Oh, God, me. yeah, let's talk about the New Orleans. You know, thing, it, it brings back a lot of memories because I, I was playing when Flipper. Well, yeah, what's your, what's your favorite memory of New Orleans? Well, I mean, playing I got a lot of them. I got they, a lot Remember, of them. the New Orleans Saints were in the West, right? and we played them twice a year. So Absolutely. every once a year, we always traveled to New Orleans. It was always odd to me that San Francisco and the Rams were in the NFC West, but so was New Orleans. And Atlanta. And Atlanta. Yeah, they, until they switched there. the South. But I like those two trips because whenever we went to New Orleans, I always went to Bourbon Street, had a good time. But whenever we went to Atlanta, I went to Freeman Shoes and bought me a pair of <laughs> brand new hey, pair of shoes. Look, when we come back, this is a commercial break. When we come right back, we got to talk about more about the Saints. Oh, man. Come on, man. And the, our a trips to New Orleans. Oh, some great trips. How about trips. those? Uh,
Hey, we're back online. Jackie, we're on point with Vincent Jackie, and here's the start. You know what's really interesting, Jackie? Just when they came out of commercial break, we saw Matt Stafford down going with the uh, the doctor two, two, Neil Elatrosh into the tent. Look, what do you look, think look it's about? He got, up, he got up slow right there. Look at his face. What? It's, I mean, they're going to take him over and check him. Is the, it the, his hand? Is it his concussion not have, protocol? They're not going to have what happened to Tua down in Miami happen with this guy. And and people lose their jobs. They're gonna take him. They're gonna test him. Right. Make sure he's not. He shouldn't be in the protocol. If he should be in the protocol, they're gonna put him there. And remember, well, he he, he took just a hit came, earlier in the game. I don't know if yeah, you saw it, Jackie. He, he, there was a he, hit he, to him. He knew coming in the game, he was gonna take a hit. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you kidding me? Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> but, if, but what if what, what, what has to happen? There. What has to happen here, Vince? Oh wait, wait. If, if Perkins, Perkins is loose. But what has to happen here, Vince, is they have to make sure that they cover every single detail of this concussion protocol with this guy. Yeah, He's sure a high-profile guy. He's just coming off of a concussion last week, and the way they handle this guy is going to be critical. There could be fines looming if it's not handled correctly. Uh, the kid's health could obviously be it. Oh uh, my goodness jeopardy. gracious! A little trick play. Greg Gaines. How about backfired. Greg Gaines? Greg, Greg Gaines. Gaines. Greg Gaines come up for that, Jackie. It's good to see Greg Gaines make a play. Yeah. He was he was out last week with an injury of some sort. Now, typically, they did this. They would have done this. They did it with a wildcat formation, and then they took Andy Dalton back on the reverse end up throwing the ball. But the Rams were were not did not fall asleep on that play, No, they Jackie. did. Well, that was, they, one, that was one pass rusher, and that was Greg, Greg Gaines. Yeah. And I think but I'm talking about in the secondary. They there was no one to throw to. Right. So the Rams did a good job. Well, well, Greg Gaines is a is a unique unique talent for the Rams. He he's a he's one of those guys that's very instinctive and yeah, and he reads things out well in the run game, the pass game. You know, he's he's a he's a good performer. Now, Jackie, the, earlier in the game, I don't know if you saw the game, but Andy Dalton was uh, as a quarterback when it's third and six or third and seven. Mm -hmm. You need to try to get attempt to get the ball downfield far enough to get the first down. Right. Okay. Right. Or unless you have a quick screen or something like that, that's just set up that way. But you don't use a dump off play over the middle and the guy gets tackled for a three yard gain. Four isn't, yard isn't gain. Usually it's it's crazy. It's ridiculous to have an offensive play like that. You're you're just playing to lose. You're not playing to win. Mm -hmm. Aaron Donald went right by. Oh, on, on my that goodness touch, On gracious. that touchdown play. Oh, boy. Aaron Donald. He was getting hit as he threw it. He went right by the left tackle. I know it. The guy didn't even dust the, the dust off his shoulder. Now, let me, tell you, let, me, let me tell you the and, concept and, and, and of this, an experienced quarterback, Jackie, what he did. When he was under pressure like that quickly and he was throwing the ball, he threw the ball with elevation. He threw it higher because he had to get rid of it earlier. Yeah. So, so you so throw it, it higher, it gets a little longer before he because he had to get rid of it so soon. Yeah. And he mm. threw a beautiful pass. That was I mean, that's that's what he's capable of no, doing. That was something I never even thought about. Yeah, what you, you just have, said. You have to do that. You know. And it has he, to be because if he had line drive that pass, no way would have got it. No way would have got it. Huh? No way. No. I'd be doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I learned something. Uh, I learned something. I learned something new. You know, if you got to get rid of it quick. Put yeah. more air under it so the guy can run underneath the ball. And did he get clobbered on that throw too? That, that that's the quarterback standing in the pocket. Yeah, he got that's, hit. He got that's a, what he can do. And he that's got what hit he by Aaron Down. Yeah, Aaron Down ran by that left tackle like he, he was, was standing. literally standing still. He went unimpeded to, directly to the quarterback. You know, well, this is this is one of the things about uh, what the office defensive coordinator the Rams is doing, and I think uh, doing a great job of this, and that is. Yeah. You find out who the weakest guy is on that on that offensive line and, and light him up over and him. let Aaron yeah. work on him. Uh, yeah. And you know, don't do it all. Don't just serve it up 100 percent of the time. But just when you least expect it, pop him over, <laughs> pop him over the weak length, oh, over the weak length. Boy, and, that's link, tough. and you got a that's chance. Tough. It's tough on good ball players, let alone, you know, again, oh, it's yeah. not is your weak link. Yeah, well, no you know, it's 24 to 14. Third early in the third quarter. Rams just gave up a long touchdown pass. We'll see what the Rams can do when we come right back. Jack is a quick commercial, and uh, we'll take another break for some of our sponsors to put a good word in. Very good. So, Very here good. we go.
Hey, we're back on point here with Vince and Jackie. And Jackie uh, just heard that um, something's wrong with Matt Stafford. Yes. Went into the tent, and uh, they, they're going with uh, Perkins now as the right. quarterback. And they're and on the move, Jackie. And he just ripped off about a 10, 12-yard run there on a read option. I mean, this, yes, this, is, this is something that's unique now that that the Saints have had to have prepared for during this, during this week. Right. There, there's nothing more deadly than an accurate quarterback and offensive play caller. Uh, when they're on top of their game, like McVay, and 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 uh, and his starting quarterback, but right. he's out now. Matthew Stafford is out now, and the the next best thing is this guy right here right, with, yeah, with, Wolf, with, with, with Wolf for being out. Wolf, so got now, a bad neck. Yeah. so now Vince, the defense, they got a lot of balance. They got to change their whole their thinking. That you got to change their whole thinking. Right. And what was the first thing they did with him? Ran the ball. That's right. They did they a little quarterback the ball read was the option. First thing they did with him. And Jackie, what the Rams will have to do as well is keep it simple for this young quarterback because it's really basically he hasn't seen much action in a, in an NFL game. He he did well during the preseason, but you know, NFL regular season is different than the preseason. Absolutely. So, but they will well, keep it somewhat simple. But you know, simple plays can work as long as they're well, Vince, as, as as they're well executed. What did they do, Vince? They lost their quarterback, the guy who can kill you down the field with the game with the ball and they brought in a backup guy who can run. And the uh, first two things they did, the, ball. the first two things they uh, did was run. ran the That's football. What they have to so do. what, the, what McVay is saying to himself right now is, Hey, I, I know this guy's good in this area. This is where we've got to use him. Right. And, mean, and, and so consequently we got, we got, there he goes again. He's going to run third it for the first down. For the yeah. third consecutive big play in a row. Right. And he made the first down and he made the first down and it, right. and, it and it was a pass. But it was a run pass option here again, Vince. Yeah. You got to give this guy the running game has to be very prominent in this guy's success in leading this team today. And in, in, in my opinion, for the Rams to get back where they need to be and where they want to be, is going to have to become more prominent in everything they do. Well, what, what this it actually does, Jackie, is it affords the team the ability to be more versatile running the football by the quarterback running the ball. As you see Absolutely. with Lamar Jackson, okay, so this is somewhat of a, of a difference for defenses to look at, and it's something they have to prepare. Now, oh, the you Saints know they, have, have not prepared for this. Oh, they had to they, have Vince because they knew coming in the ball game that Wilf was out, and they knew that this guy well, was number number two quarterback. It doesn't look like so. At some point, point in time, they had to say, "Hey, <laughs> if Matthew Stafford is having problems with his concussion, yeah. if we get to him, he's out." They're going to put this kid in, and so we well, got to be. See how they adapt. We got to prepare for the read option well, game. They're going to have to. That's adapt what they. Quickly. That's what had to have happened in new orleans well they have a nine-man lineup there now so they're preparing for a run and look at there look at that well, you see they're what not that gonna was? go anywhere they got the nine-man lineup there. That's that, i love to run but i that. love now they're frustrated they're frustrated here and as a penalty we'll see what it was but that was an aberration vince relative to that play calling because that was a trap when have we seen a trap yeah. executed by the rams well you know again the the, the play is good but I don't care what you have. No, what do you do? Do you take the holding play or do you do you decline it? Well, you know they're going to take. You Why? Know, you know it's second and eight. They lost. They lost yards. Watch this, Vince. See, that's a I trap. I don't care that's if you're a trap. Gonna, okay, you're going to run a trap, but you're that's running a trap. a trap against the nine man the line, Jack. Yeah, it doesn't but Vince, work. Vince, but I like the time play. I've seen it, the first I time I saw him run a trap this year. Well, no, that's and good. And what the problem was on this play was that the double team didn't get to the middle linebacker, and they had nine men the lined up. And they part, had an extra guy that couldn't block. The easiest part, the easiest part of blocking <laughs> that play right there is getting off the double team to the linebacker. Hello, I can't run. You know, I can't run when there's twenty guys there. Okay, they've thrown a quick screen, which is very simple. Oh, he's off. Yeah. And yeah, keeping it simple, which is a good good thing for the quarterback. Yeah. Throwing a quick screen. Now it's third and nine. You don't need to be throwing the ball third and ten when you got inexperienced offensive linemen. You're in the red zone. Well, that got half of it back right there, Jackie, which is a good call by by Sean McVay. Quick screen for a young quarterback. Get nine yards. We're in the red zone, right, Vince? Yes, they're on, the, I think, the 30, 35 yard not, line. Not quite, not quite. Yeah, 35. Just 36. outside it. There's a run. Oh, they're running the ball. They're running I mean, the ball. What, with what do you, Vince, what do you expect them to do? Yeah, I mean, 
I, I don't know why they're expecting to pass as much. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to throw the ball down the field at this right point. Right now, if I'm the they Saints, will later. If I'm the New Orleans Saints right now, I'm, I'm getting hunkered in for rundown plays. Sure. And I think, Jackie, to, to to illustrate your point, I think they were in a nickel. I don't think they need to be in the nickel defense. I mean, the, the mobility yeah. that we're seeing from this guy is – it's it's clearly yeah, and though he's had he's had a few preseason games, and the Rams don't play their veterans in preseason, so he's had the luxury of okay, getting enough reps. preseason yeah, games. You're right, but you know, still, it's a little different when you but go the, from the preseason inter- to regular the inter- season. The interesting thing about him being out there right now, Vince, is he if 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 the other guy is Wilford was healthy, yeah, he would be still be on the bench because Wilford is the number two quarterback. Yeah. And he's well, got a neck issue or something. Jackie, while they take a quick break, we need to catch the viewers up on our days in, in uh, New Orleans. And you were mentioning your your great memory that you had. Oh, man. I mean, I have my own memories. I remember when they went – before they went to the Aints and they put the sacks over their head. Uh. I, I took that team down and we were there. And I don't know what year it was, 82 or 83. You know, we drove the length of the field right before the end of the game, and we had to call our own plays. And we were we were miserable the entire game. We got the ball in field goal range. Mike Lansford kicks the winning field goal, and then after that, they started putting the the, the, the bags, sacks the on ain't, the bags. The ain't, the we, we ain't Rams. We ain't the uh, Saint fans. What was one of your memories? One, one, you I, I remember Vince uh, going to actually Chicago, mm-hmm. and we played a tough game on a Monday night against the yeah. Chicago Bears. And Mike Lansford, you know, his, his yeah. name comes up again, his, his yeah. barefoot soccer-style kicker we right. had. He kicked the game-winning field goal, and I think it was right at 50 yards at yeah. the end yeah. of the game to win the game. Okay. Uh, after the game is over with, we already know this in advance, mm-hmm. but we don't come back to L.A. We don't come back to California. We fly oh. directly to New Orleans, and we're there oh, the God. entire week. As we were gearing up for that, the Pat, Hello Bourbon Street, Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson. And oh my God, those Hall of Famers, Sam Mills and Sam Mills. They, oh they, my they, goodness, those what were, a defense they had! That may have been the best group of linebackers ever assembled on an NFL roster. They were good, quite possibly. They were they were that good, and uh, we were down there the whole week, Vince, and we didn't get curfews mm-hmm. until late in the week. Yeah, <laughs> so guys were guys were down uh-huh. on Bourbon Street, and you know just, they were just partying and having a great time you know did you guys win the game no we lost, we lost <laughs> oh, no game. wonder we lost well, the game. i remember and i can still remember god rest his soul frank warren he was about six six he oh, weighed yeah. about he weighed about three defensive linemen i remember frank yeah and he he too got me hit me right here with his big old head his head must have been that big right <laughs> and i clearly wanted to leave the ball game i mean i'm thinking what in the world just happened to me <laughs> frank big frank Big, Big Frank, Frank Ward, man. man. Boy, Some great remember. memories down in New Orleans. We used to have a good time, you know. Yeah. A lot of good restaurants to go to. Oh, the, you talk uh, about my restaurants, Jackie? Which one? Crawfish Etouffee. Oh, man. Crawfish oh. Etouffee, I fell in Cafe love Dumont. with. Cafe Dumont. How about Cafe Dumont? Yeah, with those, I went there. Uh, those I went desserts. there. Yes, I went there. Aye, aye, aye. But it seemed like everywhere you went, you could find outstanding crawfish at Tufe. It, it was just and delicious. They had, they had some good food in New Orleans. I love New Get Orleans. Get you a hurricane. It's so great. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Oh, oh yes. Uh, even to, some good Italian restaurants, too. They have a place, an Italian grocery. I don't think it's there Men anymore. Jones. Men no, Jones. No, this is the Italian grocery market. And they oh, had okay. mufaladas. You ever had a mufalada sandwich? No, I haven't. Oh, a mufalada with mortadella, and they put the spice, and they put uh, a great olive oil paste with uh, uh. cauliflower and and and. Uh, carrots and oh, it's delicious, Jackie. Sounds like it. Oh, great sandwich. Sounds like oh, it. Oh, here we are back in the third quarter. So, uh, oh, now it's the start of the fourth quarter, Jackie. Yeah, so the was, Rams are little, on the move. That was a little bit of a by di- 10. That was a little bit of a different play. What they did was they ran a play action pass off of the trap action, but the problem oh, was oh, instead I, of a instead of a stretch, yeah. They, but the problem was like, the trap was going in the opposite direction of where they actually ran the trap the last time we saw it. They might have run oh, early okay, in the game, okay, and I didn't see it, but that trap action. To me, should have been where they ran the trap to get the most Probably action. Probably might have been more effective. Yeah. Then the quarterback been rolling to the left instead of to the right. So. Right. Here at third and six, what do you call it, Jackie? He's going to put him in a passing position here. Well, you have to know now. Oh, a dump off. Oh, yeah, dump. And, and and then also you have to know, you know, in my opinion, and this is one of the things I like about Sean McVay. He he doesn't. He, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't adhere to 
standard operational protocol. That means nothing to him. Yeah. When he gets down there, if he thinks he has a play, he calls it. He's going to call that play. And whether it's a pass or a run, it really doesn't matter. But most of the time, it leans towards being a pass. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> well, he's pass oriented, right? That's, yes. uh, that's the nature of the, of the coach. Absolutely. Rams just kick a uh, field goal, 40 yard field goal. And I tell you what, the Rams inch a little closer, Jackie. They're only one score down now. It's going fourth yeah. quarter, so they got a shot. I know. You know we'll Vince, see. You know, you one other memory I have about going to New Orleans yeah. was watching Flipper Anderson set the NFL single game receiving record. I think he, what did he, what was it like 380 something? Over yards? receiving yards. I think he Re- broke the NFL record, Jackie. Yeah, yeah. For most receiving Even yards, yards in, a in, a, in a single game. In a game. That's Correct. what he did. And I was out there on the field watching, and I'm thinking. And they won that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, you know, why is this guy getting open all the time? But let's go flip. Let's go. He come back to the huddle. Everybody was saying, get, go get him, flip, go yeah. get him. And Jim Everett was just dialing it up. I, I don't even know if, if uh, Zampezi. They could have called any play to him, and it would have been successful. It, it wouldn't have mattered. they were both in a zone. They were in a zone. They were when in a zone. you get in a zone in the NFL, it you was just like keep that. going and going. Vince, Vince it There's was no like it, it. it was like they were the only two guys in the huddle. It happens. They, they the only thing they told us was the protection when we broke the huddle. <laughs> okay, we had no idea. What so he, he had to be called. He had to be the player of the game, I guess. At oh, the end yeah, of that no, game. no, no doubt about it. No, uh, but you know who they gave the player of the game? I know who they gave the ball to, Jim. Jim Everett, and I, the and quarterback I think, got credit for, but the receiver did all oh, the man, work. There's no way I'm you don't give a, you don't oh, give a man. game ball to Henry. I mean, to uh, Flipper Anderson in that game. Yeah, I'm telling oh, you, man, yeah. this, they, they, nobody could cover him. Nobody could run with him because you know he was really fast. And he was surprisingly rangy because he had long arms and everything, long legs. So when he covered ground, Vince, he covered ground. He was hard to, he you was know, hard to stop. And the last, the last real quick experience I had, Jackie, was I was a rookie the year I, we traveled to New Orleans. And uh, Don Klosterman was the, the general manager of our team. And uh-huh, that's the year uh-huh. we had Pat Hayden was playing and Joe Namath. But Pat was playing this game. We actually happened to beat. The Saints big time. We uh-huh. beat them like thirty-eight to three. Uh-huh. That was a threat. And I got on the I got on our bus uh-huh. at the completion of the game to head back to the airport, and I sat down right next to Don Klosterman when I first walked. You know, the quarterbacks just sit in front. Yeah. And I said, Don, I says, man, that was a great game. I couldn't believe the way we played. I, that, I mean, <laughs> can you believe the quarterback play? And uh-huh. I was thinking Pat <laughs> had such a good game. Right? Well, is that he what goes, you were thinking? You know what he said to me? He said, Vince. He said, you know who was the star player of that game? I go, who? Archie Manning. He said, did you see the way he kept fighting and never gave up and kept coming back play after play after play when they were down? You know, Jackie, I learned a valuable lesson there. It's not, it's how you play the game that's important. Yeah. You have to keep coming back. You right. can't never say oh, no, die. No. You have to just pay the price and exactly. keep coming back. Exactly. Especially yeah. especially at that position. Hey, when we come right back, we're going to pick up the fourth quarter action here with the Rams and Saints trailing by seven points. We'll see if they can come back and win this thing. Well, I'm
Hey, we're back online, Jackie, and we got a, our favorite caller calling in here, Crazy Dave. Crazy and Dave, Dave, are you on the line? Good. Can we hear you? I, I'm on the line, guys. How are you? Hey, we're hey, doing good. Good. Dave, good. How have you been, All Dave? Right. You doing well, good? I, well, I was good until Friday. <laughs> what happened? Wait, happened? wait, did Tennessee win? Tennessee got pummeled what? by South Carolina, That's 63 right. to 38. Oh, oh my goodness! It's, <laughs> it's the most points. It's the most points. In the history oh of college goodness. football oh. that have been scored against oh. the top five teams. Oh Dave, you know, let goodness. me ask you, you got to travel so, well, Dave. You have to travel, uh, man. Dude, uh, travel? They just went, they went to LSU and plowed them. I know, oh, but then they went to South Carolina and they couldn't win. Well, you know, it's that SEC. Everybody, everybody wants it. All play, with it all started with Georgia. It all started with Georgia. It's a, a, it, it uh, absolutely started with Georgia. Yeah, the, giving the, them the, the demise. Giving people the, Giving people the blueprint of how to go about beating a, a really good football team. Yeah, boy. Well, because yeah, yeah, the yeah, but for eight, Georgia did, but for eight games, Tennessee was killing it. They were the best team in the country. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. What's, but the, what's got, the coach's name? Uh, Josh Heupel. Josh from, Heupel. From, from Oklahoma. And he is not, oh, man. He's not going I mean, back I bet they're sorry to see him leave Oklahoma because look at Oklahoma's well, he team got now. He, he got fired. Oh, he yeah. got fired. Yeah. How can they fire Dude. a guy like that? He's turned that whole well, program because, around it with volunteers. Well, yeah, that, that because but because come, sometimes Bob Stoops doesn't think. <laughs> and uh, so that that was a dumb one. But, yeah, that, but, was, that wasn't a very good one because he, he's, but, he's an innovative guy. Wait, but Jackie, Dave was gone. He's gone back to Tennessee for a few games this year, didn't you, Dave? Oh, I went to two. I went to Alabama. That 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 Alabama, just amazing moment. Yeah, and wow. that must have been a big thrill too. for the fans. That there. was fun. That, that was that was a lot of fun. Now, Dave, what but, years were you there? I was a, uh, in the Stone Age. It and was, you, play, uh, you played quarterback for the Tennessee, right? <laughs> 19, yes, I played quarterback. That's why. Oh, that's, and then my NFL career was so great. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's good, Dave. But, but dude, I, so speaking of disasters, I'm watching this Rams game. You guys, yeah. Jack, you can help me out. What's up with the What's up with their offensive line? Perkins is out of the pocket in, in two seconds because he's got it. Well, you know, yeah. The, the expectation is that. The protection is not going to be good. And I'm watching this, and I'm seeing some pretty decent protection. I'm seeing some pretty pr decent protection schemes going on. And so, you know, I think Perkins, who has, in my opinion, he he, he has to learn to be a pass first, run second guy. He His his inclination, I think his initial inclination is to take off. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, so they're going to have to settle him down in the pocket. Yeah. They're yeah. going to have to settle yeah. him down in the pocket. And if you notice – his first four plays, I believe, uh, were all uh, the first three were runs, and I think. The, uh, yep. Then I think the third, the fourth one was like a, a little rollout to the right, which was a run pass option that he had. So I think McVeigh understands what this guy's strengths are, oh, and he's and he's doing a good job of playing to his strengths because okay. you know we've seen what happens when you give these quarterbacks read read options, particularly run in the running game. How how they can be devastating, you know. Look at the guy in Baltimore. Uh, look look at the, even the guy in uh, down in, uh, in in Philadelphia. They they have the, they they're learning to be pocket guys, but their strength right. their strength is to take off and run. Hey Dave, are you watching this game right now? I'm really I'm, just, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I'm, 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 at how I'm poorly New Orleans the Saints the, just, the Saints play calling is terrible, especially in the you, red zone. You've been saying I mean, yeah, what's wrong with there, Taysom Hill? Yeah. Why don't you put well, Taysom Hill goes. in on the seven yeah. yard line, four yard line, three yard line? Yeah, Dalton My goodness gracious, that. Dalton is is I mean it's just it's amazing. You know what? But but they're but they're they're running at will against the Rams defense. They're 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 marching down the field and then they get in the red zone and they can't and they try anything. to throw the All ball right. and he gets sacked. Yeah. I mean, what where's yeah. the sense of that? Put Taysom Hill and at least he can roll out of there. Well, if you're a Ram fan, you have to at least be encouraged oh, by the it. fact that Floyd, keep that guy in there. That Floyd got a sack. You know that. that yeah, they're, yeah. they're starting to get a, some pressure from the edge guys. You know, Aaron Donald is. You know, you line him up on the edge, and yeah, sure, he'll beat those tackles on occasion. That's not where he needs to make his money. He's going to make his hay inside over those guards and those and those centers. So for the Rams, you know, not having Von Miller, you know, which they only had him for the half a season, but he was right. critical for them. They need this guy. They need Floyd to to step his game up, and he's been paid like an elite pass rusher. He just needs to to deliver like he did on that big rush just then. Well, yeah, and now they're now they're selling for a field goal, so that was a good stand. That was a good defense, it, uh, good it, defensive it, stand it, in the red zone. It really was. It well, was. I wonder what's uh, going on around the league right now. You know, Jackie, well, uh, we well, talked about the wait. We talked about the Patriots 
in Cleveland. They were playing at home in Buffalo, and we both played in Buffalo before, Jackie, this time of year. They had to move the game to Detroit, Dave, inside. Yeah, yeah the second time they've done it. It's the second time that they had to do it once in 2014. And they won the the Bills won thirty eight to three, but they're and they're I mean they're doing okay now. I think they got, I think they're up. Uh, what are they up? Twenty four. They got twenty. Uh, twenty two to ten. Yeah, Buffalo's 20, beating twenty two to ten. But Allen, I'm I'm worried because Allen's my fantasy quarterback, and uh -huh. the last three weeks he's he has not. He's oh he's he's you're playing fantasy football. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. wow, Dave. So you got just, well you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, well, but, yeah, yeah, but not so. Sure I mean, isn't it? Don't you have to go seventeen I, I, weeks? So I, I might be wrong, but I think the guy. We'll back. I think his. I think his hand. Is <laughs> I think yeah. his yeah, hand. Well, is uh, be. Yeah, the, the yeah. elbow or the hand? I think it's the hand, or the the forearm, right in there, the the upper, right at the elbow. You're right, right okay. at the elbow. Yeah. I think yeah. that's bothering him, and you know. You know, the thing about Josh Allen that I have noticed is he takes a great deal of pride in throwing that 240 pounds of his around in the running game when he takes off. I mean, he'll he, he'll run oh, over he's, a he's DB. He'll, he'll but how big is he? He's 6'6", he, 250. He, 240, I think 240. he was. But still, he's athletic. He, he can he, run. And he's so, got a great arm. Yeah, so, so the combination of him throwing the, and hitting helmets and then stiff-arming people and running, I think maybe yeah. that's kind of, you know, it, it probably mentally – uh, makes him have to tax himself a little bit harder to right. continue to be himself. Because, you know, when you have an injury like that, you know, it's hard to be yourself and you start looking for ways to be successful, but without doing it the way you normally do. And that's what did concerns you, me about him. Did, did, did you guys see uh, Patterson's 103 yard? Uh, uh, oh, he's the best back? player for he the is Atlanta, so great, isn't Atlanta he? Falcons. I mean, goodness, yeah. Dave. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, aren't they winning this game? They're winning. They're up. They're beating Chicago 24-17 right now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay, around the league too. You, one of the big surprises is the Detroit Lions are beating the New York Giants 24 to six. Well, uh, how about Indianapolis? To six. Hey, here's the, here's a question for you, Dave. Who's statistically what? better this year, Jared Goff or Matthew Stafford? Uh, you're, uh, you're probably going to say Jared Goff. That's correct. Matthew Stafford, Jared he's Goff. He's got. He's he's tenth in the league in passing yardage per game. Uh, yeah. And I, Stafford I, I is twentieth in the oh, league. Oh wow! Passing yardage. Wow. Well, I want to know what's going on in Indianapolis right now because wow, they're uh, Hertz beating and Philadelphia. The, Hertz and the Eagles. Yeah, that's yeah. two 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 horrible performances by Hertz in a row. Back to back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dave, you're really well. following the NFL. That's awesome. Well, it's either that or World Cup, and nobody cares about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Matthew follows Matthew. My boys play soccer, and they both follow World Cup. So. I, I'm the I'm the guy that doesn't keep up with the soccer very much. Oh gosh! So, well, it's just they couldn't have picked the worst place to have that thing. Those that country is a disaster right now. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. wow. So, but well, Dave, it's so great to have you on, buddy. All right, we really well, appreciate uh, you dialing in and calling us. We'll talk well, to you no again worries. next week. Uh, until next time, you guys take it easy. All right, buddy. All right, talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, bye. Great guy, Dave. Yeah, Dave, I'll tell you what, he's he plays that fantasy football, Jackie. I know, I know. Wow. He pays attention to the game. He yeah, really he does. does. He he enjoys the game. I know he was a fan of yours and fan of mine yeah. of years and years ago. And anytime we've ever gotten together yeah. with him, we are yeah. we, we talk we, we laugh, we have a good time, yeah. but we talk football. Yeah, you know, it's he, like talking he loves the sport. It's like talking about the game with somebody who played it or coached it, but or who was around played. you when you were doing it, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. it, it makes you feel so comfortable with all of his insights. Look at this guy, jo uh, uh, Perkins, Jackie, how he's really – he's competing. Well, I mean, I love the way he yeah, competes. Remember we talked okay. about him in the preseason, Ben. I know. I'm and telling you, you, he's, you were, I like this you, guy. You, as I recall, were I like looking for how he handled himself in the pocket. You kept on saying, well, Jackie, he stood in there. And, yeah. and I'm thinking Vince is admiring the fact that this guy is standing in the pocket yeah. here. Yes. And then taking off when he has to. So you, we saw some signs. You of have this, to do uh, both as a quarterback. Look at he's even getting under center. Under center I mean, he's versatile. I mean, this is what you need to be a quarterback in the NFL, in my estimation. Okay. They're, they're, Sean McVay is starting to open up his offense a little bit. He's starting to run the ball. Here he is with How Akers running for a now first that, down. They just ran 29 pitch. Yes. Which we used to run with Eric Dickerson all the time. Right. You know how many times I've seen that play this Never, year? Never. You haven't seen it all year. I think it's the first time we've seen it. I don't I don't think I've seen that play one. Okay. How many times did the 49ers run that? They, they've been running the heck out of the pitch play. 
So I think he's take I think he's taking a play and, out of the playbook. And the blocking on it was absolutely immaculate. That you know, you need somebody to be able to set a hard edge to force that play back inside. Yeah. And that was no hard edge set on that play, Vince. Yeah. They had the sideline. They could, they had 15 yards up and down the sideline if they wanted to take it. Yeah. Now they're doing the the bootleg again, Jackie, which has been successful for them. Trying to throw well, on the ball, that, but they had it well covered. They had it well covered. They had a, that, now that's another one of their staples. That particular play right there, where the quarterback fakes. Well, that's Sean Watch McVay's staple right here. He, he, there's some play action fake. Yeah. You see, off to the left, and then two okay. guys. There's a guy deep, and there's a guy shallow, and there's a guy coming from the middle of the field. That's right. Three different options that they give the quarterback on this play, and that's what I like about now, it. Now, and what we call, we call Van Jefferson when he runs the play like that, an under route, which means it's not an over. Over is beyond the line of scrimmage, and under is behind the line of scrimmage, and then you run to the flat on the other side. So very interesting uh, play design, but they covered it well, mm. the Saints did on defense. Vince, have, have you noticed now – have you noticed that when there is a running play, yeah, or a you know a play where there's a lot of congestion of players, defensive ball players, offensive ball players, have you noticed how that is this kind of a like a scrum developing where yeah, and then where, they want where, to move the every, pile where everyone the referees don't mark the ball dead where the where the ball carrier is standing. They mark the ball in many cases where the power moves to. That's right, because so, they don't blow the whistle dead. They, so, don't, they don't blow the, the play dead, Jackie, so strategically, early. They let it Vince, play on. Strategically, it's becoming a part of the game to be in a scrum right. to move the ball carrier uh, you know, forward. Why and not? There's another trap, Vince. That's that, that, that was the third time they tried to run the trap. this game that we've seen some trap action. They ran the trap to the right twice. And they did play action pass on the trap to the left. You see? Yeah. So the, the, now what they need to do is run the play more. Well, and, I mean, and it's, a good, it's and a good concept, definitely, for yeah. sure. And, and incorporate some other plays, Vince. You know, where, the, yes. where they're moving the uh, the guard, the offside guards. Right. I mean, it, it, it it's a good designed play because it gives movement up front. And anytime you block down and pull players is always – a nice adjustment instead of just always going power and isolation oh, yeah. and man blocking up front. You have to have a variety as we mentioned. And I think the Rams are starting to get to that. Right. However, how intricate is that? We don't know at this point. Oh, oh I just over, but that was a tough, just overthrew it a little tough bit. play. Skoronic. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I think he may have been. Vince, you you would know better than me when it comes to wide receivers and route right. running and catching the ball. You know, you pay a lot more attention to the details of that than I ever have or will. Yeah. But this Garoni kid, uh, we saw him a year ago just come out of nowhere. Yeah. Made some catches, you know, did some things that we thought, well, oh, that's kind of cool. They've incorporated this guy to bring him along. But I'm noticing this year that he's his role is more prominent. Do you think he's that kind of a talent, where he should, uh, which which ju is justifiable I, to give him that many balls coming at him? No, I I don't really think so, Jackie. And and, and what I think in general is we'll make this last comment before we go to break. But I, I just think that the Rams second tier players are either below average than most of the league mm -hmm. around the league. I see what I've seen. I, I look at Miami Dolphins, for example. I mean, they are loaded with talent. I mm -hmm. mean, their first three or four. So is Jacksonville. Fifth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Even guys on their practice squad probably could come to the Rams and start. Wow. I mean, I just I just don't think, and it's probably the truth with, with a lot of linemen. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that, you know, you have to have depth. Right. You know, at every position, Absolutely. even the offensive linemen, because Absolutely. if I want to bring in a sixth offensive lineman, I want to be talented enough to go in there and move the football, Jackie. Right. Even seven offensive linemen. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with having different uh, personnel variations with in running offense. So right. we'll talk about, about that more after this break. It's a quick timeout. Uh, listen to some of our sponsors and uh, we'll be right back. Pretty good. You know, I noticed oh, that we, that's most, good. Most, most of
Welcome back to On Point with Vince and Jackie. Jackie, here we're fourth quarter. The Rams just stopped the, the Saints on fourth or third down and one. Critical play. Backed up, so they're going to get the ball back. They're trailing by 10 points. Can they do it? Well, everything's possible. Yeah, you know, that's obviously true. Obviously possible. Uh, that's, you know, you feel a whole lot better about <laughs> your chance. Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, wow, look at this. They oh, got something got going on. on. Got this, is that Jalen Ramsey? It was. It was. A throwback to Jalen Ramsey. That was a trick play. Yeah. <laughs> on the punt. I like it. That yeah. You know, Jackie, they tried it early in the game. They tried a kickoff return. The returner went right up the middle. He faked the throw to the right side, and he kept the ball, and he ran him about 30 or 40 yards. Oh, it was a great, right? great return. Is that right? Here again, this time they executed a throwback. Yes. And they uh, now there's a flag on the play. Let's flag see what it is. Play. Was it illegal block? Usually that's the call when one of these flags come up in this situation. Yeah. Holding on the Rams. Yeah. Can you but believe that? But you know, that? you gotta, you know, you gotta give it to the, the Rams staff. You know, I know they, that they, was they, it. they need it. They, they need, need a play. They, they need something play. to yeah, help they their need team. A little bit of something. And and you know what? Though it failed because of the holding penalty, it says something to the team, Vince. That team right. knows that, that that coaching staff is trying all to in to try to they're win. And to they're win. gonna be they're pulling to things out of the hat. So they just they they just, just got to trust that they've been prepared properly, and then whatever the coaches call you, you got to go out and do it the best you can. Right. That right. that was clearly a hole in penalty yeah. on number forty three right there. Yeah, that's, See that's a shame because that was a decent return. That would have gave the Rams great field position. Yeah, it certainly was. Because they need to, they need two scores, Jackie, to yeah, come back know, in this game. I know. And we're looking at only three minutes. Three minutes to go. Well, you know, looking around the league, Jackie, there's a lot of a lot of teams that are. Dealing with this cold weather that's hitting the striking across the United States, that that Jets and the Patriots game back in Foxborough today, three to three. Oh, Does the yeah. cold, weather, cold weather? I mean, have something to do with the low scoring of that game? But yeah. most of the games in the NFL this year have been low scoring. You know, I'll say this about the Patriot uh, football team. You know, and they just ran that trap again. The Rams did. Do you see that? Wow! But that's, that time they used the quarterback key. Yeah, they. It, so it was a it was a trap, like a thirty-five trap key. Keep, yeah. yeah. So the so the quarterback right. is gonna they're gonna run the same blocking scheme, which is pulling right the left guard scorer right there. But Jackie, at this and then at they this position, the quarterback at this position in the game, at three minutes to go in the game, you have to throw the football. You can't really yeah. run it. You're gonna have to just start dealing Boom. in the passing and game. And you see what has happened. Well, you got to be I able mean, to pass can, protect. Yeah. I mean, he came whistling oh, around that left tackle. Gracious. He came whistling around that left tackle mm. like he was absolutely standing still. Right. Absolutely, he just ran right by Watch number. This. First of all, look where's he where's looking? the left tackle? He's got to get out there, Jay. He's so, backing he up too in, slow. It's just, it's just way too much. Don't you have to get off the way line of too much take back pedal? He was facing the sideline in two and a half yards. You, Jackie, you I've, can't face I've the sideline. I've and two seen and a half you sometimes you back up almost five yards back when you have a speed yeah, rusher. But, yeah, sometimes absolutely. Before you connect with absolutely. him, absolutely. But Vince, that you got to get back. That young man had turned and was facing the sideline within two yards. That's way too shallow to be facing the sideline. Yeah. You see, he did the same thing right there. That's a jailbreak there. That's right I mean, up the this middle. Is just, this is just this is sad. This is this this I is, mean, you know what this is? This is this is a football team that's energized, energized by the theme that the Rams offensive line is not capable of holding up. That's true. That's and so true. these people came into this game anticipating that they were going to beat these boys just like that. Oh now, my that God. right guard got beat like he stole the governor's meal right then and there. <laughs> did you see it? Yeah, I did I see mean, it. his head was down, his arms was bending at the waist. I, I did That's see not the it, way. I don't know. Who, no, I know. Who, I don't understand how that could be condoned in any way, shape, form, or fashion in a National Football League game by an offensive line coach. That There's well, no way – that what the right guard just did and giving up, the, allowing that sack should ever happen on a professional football field in the National Football League. Well, let's reiterate this. Games are won and lost in the upfront line play of offense and defense. Okay, Jackie? And, you know, it's the most overlooked position sometimes in the NFL. They look at the star players, the players that are focused on the quarterback and the receiver. But, you know, the real MVPs of the league are the people up front that are in the trenches that have to move the line of scrimmage. They have to protect Absolutely. their quarterback and they have Absolutely. to pressure their, their, their opponents. You're right. And yeah. that's where most of these games are won and lost. Look around the league, the top teams, how are they stacked up on the offensive and defensive lines? They're at very the top. Well. They're at the top. The big, the physical, the very well taught, the, they're, they're technically sound. I mean, I look at, 
you know, solving certain technical problems for an offensive left tackle, whether he's in Green Bay, L.A., or Detroit, are absolutely the same, Vince. you got to teach yeah. a guy to take where his weight is distributed, when he's taking his set, what he's looking for, what he's anticipating, how deep the quarterback's drop is. You know, all of these things come to play in order for an offensive tackle or guard, for that matter, to be successful. I don't know if you noticed it, Vince, but one of the things that's occurring in the NFL – is that they'll take, and this is this happening in particular with the Rams, is they'll take Aaron Donald, who historically would line up in a three technique just outside the shoulder of the guard, and then they'll put him Moving. all the way out to the inside eye of that tackle. Right. So now Aaron Donald is allowed as a defensive tackle to play in more space against a guard who's usually playing in a box. That guard is not used to kicking off the ball and dealing with Aaron Donald two and a half, three yards off the ball with depth and dealing with all the stuff that he can serve. Well, he's not used to that. He used to deal with a big, fat guy that's close to powerful right in front of him that he can get his hands on right away. And so when I see what's going on in the National Football League, I see the duplicity that offensive line coaches have in teaching guards Correct. to play like tackles. Correct. Uh, you, you, aren't you, aren't you sending a message to the enti your entire opponent that every offensive lineman has to be aware of where this this guy's going to line up oh. and they have to deal with him. So yeah. he may be over the guard. He might be over the center. He might be over the end. He might be over the outside the tight end. Yeah. So I mean, this, this you is, have to be prepared for this, that. And, one, and this is where one of the things that, you know, when you tell an offensive lineman to go work on his pass set, yes, you know, most of them think, okay, I'm going to work on my pass set. They're kicking off the ball, kicking off the ball, kicking off the ball. But there's more to that than working on your. There's work more to working on your pass set than just kicking off the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to factor in whether it's a three step drop, a five step drop, a seven step drop. You got to factor in the alignment. Yeah. Of the big guy that's on you, is he in a three eye? Is it is it a little bit wider? Is it a little bit wider still? Each and every alignment that that guy gives you should should dictate a pass set that you take to that alignment. That's correct. So you can't just go and work on your set. Well, you got to work on your Multi, that's the intricacies of the detail of sets. your position you have to know multiple and jackie sets. as we head into the two minutes of this game looks like the rams are going to suffer their fourth defeat in a row i mean this is this is the reigning super bowl champion team for a team like the rams that may be out of the postseason this is the first time i think in a long time that we've seen maybe the denver broncos maybe six eight years ago didn't make the playoffs after they won the super bowl what what does that say to the Rams and how they move forward? I mean, they haven't really built their team on their draft picks. They've given up so many to acquire these. What what's going to happen to this team moving forward? You know, it's gonna it's gonna be fun to watch to see. Uh, you know, I'm I, I'm 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 where old school meets new school. That's yeah. where I am. I you know, the years that I played and the things that I saw us do and have success, many of those things are being thrown out of the window now mm -hmm. by these young and innovative uh, managers and, and general managers of the team and the coaches and everything. The Rams deliberately and all-knowingly went in to win the Super Bowl last year. There was no mistake about that. They said, screw those picks and all of the jargon that was coming out of Ram camp was, we are here to win the Super Bowl this year. That's, and they did. That's it. what it sounded like. But they gave up like a it. lot, man. They did. They gave up a lot. They, they gave up a, a first and a second, a second and a third round draft choice for Von Miller. Now they didn't have to pay the bulk of his salary. You know they got the break there, but that's two picks, two yeah. top high picks. They have two two first round draft picks for Matt Stafford. Yes, yeah. they gave up two first round picks for Matt. Stafford. I mean, I remember when I was a free agent, Jackie. <laughs> they talked about we got to give up one first round draft pick. They said there's no <laughs> way we'd ever do that. Now they one give up first two. Round now they give up two. And I think it was a third or fourth rounder they gave up as well. Yeah, well, I mean, don't yeah. forget now they how many first round picks did they give up for Jared Goff to begin with? That's true too. Now they and got, they drafted him first, yeah, first they, player. They, they kind of got those picks back. When and ironically, them. he's playing better this year than Matt Stafford. I mean, but yeah, well, you know, that's a team that that's a whole different story. Yeah, but it's a, uh, you can almost always, but I, I like Matt Stafford. I, I do like Matthew yeah, Stafford. I, I like the way he's played quarterback. He's, he's a quality quarterback. He's just – this is not the same team as it was last year in their Super Bowl run. It's not the same team. And, and Matthew Stafford, in my opinion, based on the way they've dealt with him, he, he, he you know, he's been taken care of. It's not like he's been asked to do too much where it was going to be too physically demanding on him. He's, right. he's been – you know, they, they – they, done some things to take care of him all along through training camp and everything when he had his 
sure. his, his problem with his arm or shoulder or whatever. They, they've taken uh, – McVay has taken good care of him. But, you know, there's only so much you can do. That's true. And you know, a lot of taking care of a good quarterback – has to do with how well you take care of the 330 the the pound men. That are, that, <laughs> They're going to protect them up front. That are them. That's exactly and then to right. another point that you made, Vince, another point that you made, um, you know, when you give up your draft picks, mm -hmm. you are saying that you have the ability to go and get players off of other people's practice squads, off of the street. Mm -hmm. You have so much confidence in what you do and what you teach in your system that you can basically Sorry. get anybody – to come in and do these jobs. Well, it's obvious you can't get anybody. Well, I mean, if that's what how you feel about it, then you have to learn how to get anybody's that can actually do it. That's you know, you got to be that's specific true. about uh, your anybody's. <laughs> yeah, you better know what to do. You better, I mean, you better be specific about your anybody's. Otherwise, anybody won't be able to get the job done. And I think we're kind of seeing some of that play itself out with the Rams now, don't you? Yeah. Well, I'm just watching this play here with Taysom Hill. I, I it's the first time I think I've ever seen a team try to draw another team off on third down. <laughs> it's like they're going to be penalized five yards, or unless they call the timeout, they probably called the timeout. I'm sure I would, they would never let the clock expire. But yeah, I think you're right, Jackie. So as we look around the league, Jackie, I mean, if the Rams are not going to be returning to the postseason, I mean, it looks at this point like that's going to be a long shot, even if they make the postseason. Who are the best teams in the NFC, well, in your mind? Who I, do you, who do you like gonna, so far? This is halfway you, point. I was going to ask you earlier, do you think Philadelphia has replaced the Rams as the top dog? Ah, God, uh, not after last week and today, I don't yes, think. Yes, but then I'm, you see the last week and today, and you wonder, okay, well, maybe, that, maybe they aren't. Well, Jackie, but it's interesting. When Washington Redskins played them last week, Ron Rivera came in with a smash mouth attitude Absolutely. and they stood Absolutely. up player for player. And they said, we're not going to let these guys push us Absolutely. around. We're going to push what, them what, around. What, and they won the game. They ran, what did they run the ball? 40 times? Oh, last? they clobbered. They them. had 57. They had 57 running plays, 57 plays in the first half. That's amazing. That's that, a lot of yeah, they, tearing your defense. And, like and the time of possession. I didn't even see Philadelphia's offense on the team much at all in that game. Yeah. I mean, so I, I I don't think Philadelphia there, there's something missing there. Although I think Sirianni's done a great job with this this team and they've they've yeah. made great strides forward. But he to has. me, he I don't really think has. they're in the class of the Dallas Cowboys. And I think New York Giants losing today is going to be a a big hit on that team. But I like the Cowboys. I like their defensive pass rush. Oh, I do too. I think with Dak when he gets healthy Michael now, Parsons I think special. they're. I think they're going to be they're going to be something to deal with in the playoffs. And I don't like Minnesota. Yeah, you I'm don't? not. I'm not. I I love Justin Jefferson. Uh -huh. I love that receiver. Yeah. Uh, what I don't you like about Philly, Minnesota? I, 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 because you know like Kirk Cousins Minnesota? finds a way. I mean, they have been finding ways to win outside of what he's done. To be honest with you, let Jackie. me tell you what I like about them. I like their head coach, Kevin O'Connell. Uh, he is know, a, he's you, a sharp you, young coach. You, you know, Kevin O'Connell was drafted by the Patriots the same year yes. as my son. I know. Matthew I know you like him. I know you like. He's and pretty I think sharp. He was guy. a third round pick of, you know, second or something like that. But I've known him not so much from from the the Patriots because he wasn't there that long. Where I got to know him is that uh, an an agent, a very prominent agent in Southern California, who represented Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. and a ton of other big name quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Were use, he, they were using Kevin O'Connell to train their quarterbacks, to talk to them about the play and the nuances of quarterback play. So he's been involved in that even before he came to, to, the, to, to, to be the offensive coordinator at, for the Rams. At, at the Rams. So I'm happy to see him. And my, my son Matthew told me that, that this guy was always making notes. He was So he's, he's probably had aspirations of being – you know, a, a coach for years and years and years, Vince, and he's just been putting his book together on how, to, how he wants to do it. Well, obviously, he's been able to convey to the team of his experience and as a quality type of coach, Jackie, and to give him the confidence that they would need right. in these tight situations. They've been pulling these games out. That, well, a lot well, of that has to do with coaching. Absolutely. And the ability, look at, look at that, ability to to parlay that into confidence to your players. This is a sad commentary. I, 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 the, yeah, I didn't this, mean to cut you off. I know, but, but this is I'm this is ugly. Watching, it's ugly. I I'm know. sitting here watching a guy that I don't even know his name. I know. I don't even remember about anybody wearing that number. No, on the, for they're talking about the past, Saints. Yeah, it's running past. No, the, the third most critical pass blocking position on the line, and that is the blind side inside. Checking the entire the defense, left, the left guard spot. 
They're running by a guy like he's standing still. But the entire defensive front is is making progress. They're they're not being stymied at the line at all. They're, instead of let the outside guys at least come in a little bit, you can step up, but the, there's nowhere to step up into the pocket. The decision, decision that was made to play number 64 at left guard for the Rams today, I have no idea how they could come up with that decision other than the fact that everybody else is hurt. Yeah. Nobody else knows anything about the verbiage of the system. Or any number, you got to give me two or three reasons why that guy – is playing left guard for the Rams right now. I've seen people run by him twice, Vince, and, and it's like he didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's some of the problems that you that, that are associated with losing guys in the offensive line. You know, you bring guys in and, you know, maybe they were at a training camp someplace else on someone else's practice squad, and then well, you might use a terminology that, like, turn. Here's a wild card you, illustration, Jackie. Look at this. Yeah, you Hate might, to interrupt you, but – yeah. I mean, this is the NFC wild card. We, we didn't even talk about the 49ers in the West. I mean, I th I think they're the they're yeah. the team to beat in the West. Yeah. Can you believe that the Commanders, the Washington Commanders, are two games up on the Rams? <laughs> yeah. You know, Jackie. How about the AFC East? Every team, if the if the oh, yeah. playoffs were supposed to start today, every, every team in the, the, in the AFC playoff. East would be in the playoffs. How about that? Huh? Wow. Is that the toughest? Is that the toughest? Well, division? it's almost got to be the way Miami's playing. Toughest division. I mean, the, the Patriots are playing good football now, and, and the Jets are, are a turnaround team. If anyone was a turnaround team, they are. Yeah, they are. And then, well, of course, you got about Buffalo. The Giants. Don't forget about the Giants. No, I know the Giants they, are, are playing good, too. Team. You got to give them a lot of props for that. But, you know, my two favorites? Who? I like Kansas City. Yeah. I've always liked the Chargers, but I don't know if they have enough firepower right especially yeah. and they're not moving the quarterback enough around jackie yeah. for me yeah. uh they have a great quarterback the, the offense they need to do a lot more so well when you say um, firepower events i'm assuming that you mean keenan allen and williams being, being out with the hamstring and the that, ankle right that hurts that hurts but so the, what what other firepower, firepower do you need other than those two firepower guys I, they need to mix it up because they rely too much on the pass they do they do the run like the 49ers used to when they were the west coast offense you know they were west coast offense where they they the run uh -huh. uh, the pass sets up the run pretty yeah. much oh, and okay. they weren't run first and oh, i think okay. they really need to get back to that and maybe a lot of that has to do with their offensive uh their offensive line here gay just kicked another field goal for yeah, the rams see, you see what the score is right are but, they down by seven no no they're down by yeah they're down by one touch 27 but look, but look, Vince, they only got six, six seconds. seconds yeah i know what, well, what I, can you possibly do in six seconds well they hope they kick the ball ever, the guy you, fumbles the ball and they run it back for a touchdown run but have you touchdown. ever seen that happen no i've never seconds? had it no never when, when someone needed it to happen well, I've never seen it happen. But someone well, needed it to happen. Well, so you're saying? Well, I mean, I'm saying the three, party's over. Three points closer. I'm saying the party's over. Well, that's true too. Well, and the Rams are going to have to go back to the drawing board. They're going to have to look at all the decisions that they made about this game. They're going to have to challenge themselves to keep pushing forward with variety in their running game because we saw three traps today that we haven't seen all season long. And there are other things that these guys could do. The guy that's over there struggling the very most in pass protection, if you gave him four or five more assignments to do, he'd be a much better blocker. There's no doubt. Yeah, that's mind. true. That's true. And and maybe they uh they they'll be listening to our show today. <laughs> See if they can come up with some good ideas. Well, the the one thing about us is we you and I we bleed blue and gold. gold. That, that's we're, right. We're Ram we're, fans and, and I think everybody right. knows that. And any criticism that I have to offer up is it's wholesome and you know, my opinion, Corrective. Obviously, my opinion, obviously, but, uh, you know, I'm asked to give my opinion. Yeah, on, that's on, right. That's on, right. In this particular try. situation. And it's not always, uh, you know, it's my, not always pretty. It's not always pretty. It's not yeah. always going to, you know, sound like what maybe others want to hear. Well, at the conclusion of this game, Jackie, we might just recap uh, what happened in the NFL and maybe just touch briefly on that big game that was yesterday usc ucla oh game goodness. what a great game that Caleb was williams, oh man. my goodness gracious Caleb williams. he is he is a tremendous player and then how about charbonnet charbonnet oh, he's a great charbonnet great he runner. just was a great running back for ucla i i loved love both those players yesterday and to see the well you know the quarterback at see UCLA, one team lose was tough the quarterback at ucla wasn't you know, he, he wasn't on top of his game because he threw three picks. Well, he wasn't Caleb Williams. Let's put it no, that way. No, he wasn't Caleb I mean, Williams. Yeah, and he doesn't – he doesn't – Jackie, so much of a quarterback's ability to be a, a great player is 
your persuasion, how you how you persuade your players around you to be better. How do you make them better? Yeah. And, you know, you can't make them better by uh, by making excuses or blaming other people. You, you have to take you know, you have to take it upon your the, the weight of the it has to be on your shoulders and just just and do you, the best. Didn't Step you forward. Did you best tell me forward. you saw him yelling at one of his teammates? At one time, a couple games this year, I, I wasn't quite happy with the way he, you know, his his body language was during the bad play that when yeah. something didn't go right. Yeah. So, I mean, I I think, you know, ultimately, so much has to be the the pers- like I said, persuasion, your ability to be confident and make players around you that much better. Yeah, absolutely. you know, and you you have to be a great team player and lead by example you know i caleb williams you can get mad at guys you can get mad at guys it's the way how you carry yourself how you do it yeah you know how you talk to somebody yeah, exactly. is uh, and so uh him? but i i really like him i think he's got a good shot at the heisman trophy yeah because the they're, the they they're in the top they're in the top they gotta be in the top four teams in the country what does he have? four games this four or five games this year we threw over 400 yards you can't and then over 500 yesterday it's hard to defend a player like that jack yeah. because so he can he run, can he run. Can he's he can he's got did you see him one play yesterday sprint to his left and throw the ball yes. a dart to yes. a player. It yes. came out of nowhere. nowhere. That ball came out of nowhere. And that guy was well covered. And he was play. covered. He was and instantly. He w- was covered, and then for a split second, he was open. He got the ball. Yeah, a split second. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, that, it's amazing. Hard. He was running was, hard to his left too. I mean, when a yeah. lot of pressure coming when Lincoln on him. Riley left Oklahoma, he wanted one player, and that was Caleb Williams and to come with him. And why. look what it's done. Can one player like that make a big difference? Well, you know, in like the, in the with what they are doing with these portal, the poor, you know, years ago, prior to this um, freelance free agency that we're seeing in in college football, prior to that. You know, a coach had to do his research, man. He had to look and and go through all of the high school guys and look. If we need if we need an outside linebacker, we got to look all over the country to get this guy. Now, all I got to do is look at the top colleges, look at the top colleges, and see a guy that's played that has another year of eligibility that can bring it right. that you think can help your football team. And you might have a higher uh, profile situation than where the guy's coming from. And it'll give him an opportunity to jackpot to the National Football League. Yeah, those are the areas now where these coaches and organizations are doing their recruiting. You know, this yeah, they, they yeah. want the good high school players, but they want the good guys who've already been in college who are looking to take another step uh, towards the pros that they don't have to spend a lot of time with. Well, those Who's two guys ready right now. Those two guys we just talked about will be playing on Sundays in a couple of years, and maybe. Charbonnet will be playing next year. But I have to say one other thing about a quarterback, Jackie. And I, when I watched that UCLA game, UCLA coaching staff did a great job uh, pregame preparation for this game. They had plays that were out of the ordinary, that they were surprise attack, that they, they made, they were very successful. But you have to have sustainability, Jackie, especially a quarterback, to play 60 minutes. And if you're great for three quarters, you have to be great for four quarters. That's what Jake Caleb Williams would bring to that team. Yes, There's yes. no quit in that guy. And no I quit. believe me, uh, Robinson a did a great job a too. He was he had a lot of heart. I loved his intensity. I yeah. loved the way he would take off and run, just make took plays. off, he and he plays. wanted to make a play, and he was tough in what he did. But the sustainability of that quarterback was just beyond belief. And it was something that was very special. Mm -hmm. So I think he's, uh, he's going to bring a lot to a team down the road. I guess the, uh, that would uh, conclude, I guess, that game today with the Rams and Saints. Jackie, they go down and defeat by seven points. Yeah, yeah. I see and, they moved uh, on to a different game. They moved game. on to a different game. And, yeah. uh, I mean, you have to give the, the Saints credit for, for staying in that game. The Rams just were overwhelmed again, I think. Their offensive line was uh, – was was an area of Vince, concern. And, and, and let me just make sure I got one thing clear that I think you said. Dalton Hilliard. Dalton, the quarterback. Yeah. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. I call him Dalton Hilliard. I'm right. thinking about the running back. That's right. Yeah. With the same. <laughs> that's right. But well, that's Andy Dalton. Memory. But Andy, Andy Dalton, did you feel that he honestly gave them a better chance to win the ball game than Jamin, Jameis Winston would have? Today, uh, Jameis Winston has had great success with the Rams in the past, Jackie. Yes, I and know. he's always played well when against he put the Rams. And he, on him right, and he won here, here at the, on the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. So, um, I I don't know. For again, 
I think he's got a, a great arm, but I think they get uh, in a position where they become stereotyped because all they want to do is throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. They have to be versatile. If they're going to win consistently in the NFL, like we talked about, they're going to have to put, if he's not going to be the guy, then maybe Taysom Hill would, will give a, a team a great chance here, here and then. But I think that that's, that's the name of the game. You know, whether I don't think they're, they're better off with either, either quarterback, mm. Andy Dalton. I particularly think Andy Dalton, has seen his best days mm. in the NFL. And I think he's just so – he's you, a good so, thrower, so, so but to answer my question, I don't think he can win a championship. So to answer my me. question, you think they should put Jameis Winston back in? He's younger, he's played a lot less football, and he's uh, probably more of a of a, a talent with with a, with more future left than, than Dalton. I think so, along those lines, more than likely. And I think Dalton would have been a good guy in relief Mm -hmm. You know, if they needed some a, a spark or something, I mean, mm -hmm. that's why they brought him in, mm -hmm. and uh, because they can use Taysom Hill as well. Yeah, to, he to did throw some passes. Yeah, today. Taysom Hill gives a team a, a little variation, which is really good, and it it, it uh, gives the defense something to think about. So, but yeah, moving forward, I, I don't see the 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 Saints as a contender though, Jackie. Uh, not not from what I've seen, I don't think they have the ability to do that. But. Um, um, I hope that uh, answers a lot of our viewers' questions at home about, you know, what we see. And I hope the Rams, I hope the Rams can can get it together before the end of the season, Jackie. Just moving forward, I think that'll be a big lift for the for this team. If they can't, then there's going to have to be a lot of soul searching. One last question for this for team. You, Vince. The Rams make the playoffs uh, after today's game. No, there are too many other decent teams, Jackie, ahead of them that uh, are in a position in the way the NFL is today. Everybody's beating everybody else every other week. So, I mean, even if they went that way the rest of the year, they're, they're still going to miss the playoffs. But um, we'll uh, wait and see what happens next week. Don't give up. Stay in there. Keep no, fighting. Ever give and up. Uh, from Jackie and, uh, and Vince, on point, we like to thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for us. We'll be back next week and watch the Rams in their next conquest. See you next week.